Hi, Shannon Seiler here, supplying you with some notes on silent cinema's dark and sinister film, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which first premiered at the Berlin Marmahaus on February 27, 1920. Perhaps best known of all Weimar films, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari has been viewed worldwide as an exemplar of early 20th century German Expressionism. From the year it was released, the film received critical praise. Hugely influential British critic Paul Rotha described the film as a drop of wine in an ocean of salt water. However, along with public praise came public controversy over who should be credited for the innovative expressionist style found throughout the film. While some assumed the director, Robert Vina, should naturally receive credit, many recognized the scriptwriters Hans Hanowitz and Karl Meyer as the expressionist-inspired originators of the film. While this controversy still continues today, so does the influence of this film upon world cinema. Returning to Germany after World War I, scriptwriters Hanowitz and Meyer conceived of and wrote a revolutionary screenplay about insane authority entitled The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. They then presented the script to Eric Pomer, chief executive of the German production company Dekla Bioshop Studios. Pomer is noted stating, Hanowitz and Meyer saw in their script an experiment. I saw a comparatively inexpensive production. Due to the abstract focus of German expressionist films, such as The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, the set, the set design need not be extremely realistic, leaving costs cheap. After taking on the script, Palmer hired Robert Wiener to direct the film. Wiener, who had a previous reputation as a skillful and versatile scriptwriter, altered Hanowitz and Meyer's script as he added a narrative frame to their story, creating one of the earliest examples of a frame story in film. This addition to the script also led to controversy over the authoritative and artistic roles of Wiener and scriptwriters Hanowitz and Meyer. Wiener's additional frame narrative is found at the beginning of the film as it introduces the main narrative. Most of the main narrative's plot is presented as a flashback, as told by the protagonist, Francis. Francis, played by Frederick Feher, and an elderly man are sharing stories when a distracted-looking woman, Jane, played by Lil Degover, passes by. Francis calls her his betrothed and then begins to narrate his haunting tale of Dr. Caligari and his somnambulist, Cesare. Francis's story, The Frame Tale, begins with himself and his friend, Alan as they visit a carnival in their German village, Holstenwall. Here the mysterious experiences begin as they encounter the menacing Dr. Caligari, played by Warner Krauss, and Caligari's carnival attraction, the somnambulist Cesare, played by Conrad Veidt. Both actors, Krauss and Veidt, were praised by critics for their bewitching roles as Caligari and Cesare. As Cesare's sleeping state is supposed to allow him to see into the future, Alan asks Cesare how long he will live. Cesare bluntly replies that Alan will die before dawn. This scary prophecy is unfortunately fulfilled by murder, the second murder that has happened since the carnival has arrived in town. Further frightful investigation is carried out by Francis and the authorities as they try to uncover the secrets behind the murders. Jane's brush with horror, and how Dr. Caligari and his somnambulist are connected to these terrifying events. As the narrative returns to the present moment, or frame narrative, with Francis concluding his tale, the audience is greeted with a twist ending that I will not discuss any further as to not ruin your appetite for the film. Before discussing how director Robert Vena created an exemplar German Expressionist film, you might like to know what German Expressionism is exactly. The term refers to an artistic movement encompassing film, theater, painting, and other arts in the early 20th century throughout Germany, specifically Berlin. 
that sought to give shape to psychological states through highly stylized visuals. Instead of trying to depict an objective reality, the artists of this movement tried to illustrate the subjective emotions and responses that objects and events arouse within a person. A major catalyst for the German Expressionist cinema was World War I. Casualties on the battlefields resulted in artistic preoccupation with death and the supernatural. While artistic focus allowed for a kind of national mourning and a revolutionary critique of war, it also provided Germany with a means of economic recovery from World War I. Throughout recovery following the war, the German film industry was thriving, but because of the hard economic times, filmmakers found it difficult to create movies that might compete with the extravagant features of other films, specifically those being produced in Hollywood. The filmmakers of the German studios worked to compensate for the lack of a high budget by using wildly non-realistic, geometrically absurd sets, along with designs painted on walls and floors to really represent lights, shadows, and objects. By creating an abstract and symbolic mise-en-scene, German Expressionist film directors were able to insert mood into their films. So how did Vena create a film that exemplified this dark and moody school of film known as German Expressionism? Well, the themes of madness, insanity, betrayal, and other horrific internal struggles found in the film of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari lend themselves well to incorporate Expressionism in the making of this film. Also, Vena worked to create a set design which mimicked Expressionist paintings. With the help of art directors Hermann Warm, Walter Rohrig, and Walter Riemann, Vena was able to create a nightmarish realm through an experimental and bold set design made up of abstract and absurd painted sets. German films were more likely to use these painted set designs due to economic constraints, as mentioned earlier. However, this type of painted set worked in Warm, Rorig's, and Riemann's favor, as it allowed them to more closely mimic the Expressionist paintings of their time. Just like Expressionist paintings, the set design of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari includes environments that are crowded, sharp angled buildings that sag or lean, a ground tilted up steeply, and cartoonishly large shapes. The film's remarkably designed visual elements are important in continuing the narrative of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, and at the same time driving the audience's thematic involvement. The chiaroscuro lighting throughout the film works to emphasize this nightmarish set design as it employs extreme contrasts of light and dark, thus creating dramatic shadows. This dramatic lighting and severe contrast of light and dark helps to emphasize the film's particular effect of fear, horror, and weariness, while also highlighting character roles. For example, the sinister and evil personality of Cesare is emphasized as he hides masked in night's darkness outside of Jane's window. This characterization of Cesare is then severely contrasted with the pure and innocent characterization of Jane as she lies under a light which highlights her pale skin and her immaculately white nightgown and bedding. The lighting throughout this scene and several others helps the audience to grasp the film's theme of the duality of one's inner or subconscious mind that often stands ambiguously between bright and dark or good and evil. Another artistic element employed throughout the cabinet of Dr. Caligari is the iris technique a unique element to the medium of film. The iris is a technique used to show an image in only one small round area of the screen. An iris out begins as a pinpoint and then moves outward to reveal the full screen, while an iris in moves inward from all sides to leave only a small image on the screen. An iris can be either a transitional device, using the image held as a point of transition, or a way of focusing attention on a specific part of a scene without reducing the scene in size. While Vena's employment of the iris in and iris out was not new to film during the 1920s, the manner in which Vena uses this technique is innovative. As critic Ian Roberts notes, 
Fela makes great use of this technique to highlight key moments and to move between significant scenes. The iris technique is seen throughout the carnival scenes, and more importantly, this tight circular focus helps to accentuate the authority of the menacing figures of Dr. Caligari and Cesare throughout the film. It is recorded that the iris in upon Cesare's eyes as he first awakens was so bone-chillingly terrifying to a woman in a 1920s audience that she screamed and then immediately fainted. While this might not happen to you, I think the focus upon Cesare's deathly face and makeup will at least send shivers down your back. Two genres that were especially influenced by German Expressionist films and specifically by The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, were the genres of horror film and film noir. The German Expressionist films of the 1920s led to the Universal Studios monster films of the 1930s, the German, American, and French film noir crime films of the 1940s, and contemporary films such as Alex Proya's 1998 film Dark City and Tim Burton's 1992 film Batman Returns. The character of Dr. Caligari was even inspiration for the appearance of Batman Returns' evil character of Penguin Man. However, the influence of Vena's The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari does not stop at just the film industry. Ironically, this silent film has greatly influenced different musical artists and composers. Several musicians have composed new musical scores to accompany the film or stage adaptations of the film, including the Clubfoot Orchestra and Bill Nelson. Nelson later recorded the music for his 1982 album Das Cabinet des Caligari. Also, the Kino Video Edition of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari allows viewers to choose what music the film is accompanied by. Viewers can choose from music composed and performed by Donald Sosin or a contemporary orchestral score by Rainier Bigblock. In my final comments to you, I would like to point out that Robert Vena's film The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari has remained a film classic and continues to be screened all over the world. Long before the mid-century horror film, Caligari demonstrated that human psychology and the fragile social order can be more terrifying than zombies or vampires. As S.S. Pryor noted 20 years ago, the horror films of this century are Caligari's children.